art form, but it's also a terribly repressed art form. Yeah. And I think that's true in many parts of the world. I mean, Richard was just telling me about the, the press release that England's declared war on Banksy. There's something that just captivates people about what all that's wrong in the world, and I think, and, and then fighting through to make these wonderful pieces that, that surprise you. They just surprise you, right? And, and, and in that way that art can do, kind of make you think completely outside of the box and think about possibilities. And like, but it's horrific that they're doing that. This is one of the things that really, really trips me out because a friend of mine was talking to some kids in, a, you know, kids maybe 14, 15 years old, Chicano youth in, in MacArthur Park last Monday. And they, were talk, and they were talking about this and that. And somehow Banksy's name came up. And these kids were like blown away. They were just so excited. And they said, you know, we think that there's more than one Banksy. <laughs> and they said, and actually there has to be more than one. They're saying there's going to be Banksy's everywhere. It's not just one person. And they had done this amazing piece I was telling you about where they did the Abu Ghraib doll with the hood and put it in the mouth of the Universal City Walk. Jurassic Park. <laughs> and we want to be Banksy's. We all want to be Banksy's. You know, it was a kind of, so that was the kind of spirit, I think, that even in the beginning when I first met him was that, that was sort of taking over some things and really being put out there. It was a certain thrill to the work that he did. And I really admired that the kind of in your face, like he takes a stick and he, he really pokes it in, in, the, in the eyes of the system. And I saw that piece that he did after that. What was it after they, they, his paintings first started selling for big money and he did that piece about I can't believe you morons are back. It's like, you know, and he posts it up and people can download it. You know? okay. But it's sort of, I mean, there's a whole, and I do think it's important. I think the art he, you know, that he makes, that's, that, that, you know, and I think it should be. It should be in public spaces and it should be in private spaces. It should be in people's collections. It should be in museums. But it, shouldn't, it should definitely also be, a large chunk of it should be available broadly. And I think that's what he really tries to do. You need a certain level of anonymity. You need to, and it's different from making a, a rock star out of an individual as opposed to concentrating people, trying to concentrate people's attention on the audience. I mean, just in terms of why he would remain anonymous, obviously his work is very dangerous. You know, and I wish, I wish people didn't have to be anonymous, but that's another world, you know, <laughs> where we could have these open conversations about things. But his work is very dangerous, and if you have, there are many artists whose work was considered too dangerous. And um, I think he's wise to understand that if he's going to intrude in public spaces the way he does and with his statements and, and hopefully he's okay and hopefully there are people taking care of him and who understand that people like that need to be defended. But I just think um, it's the world we live in and he's trying to, he understands the realities of that world. I think around the world, you know, the whole art form of, you know, urban art and stuff like that, graffiti, I think is very much an expression of, you know, the, the passion that youth and different people around the world have to express themselves. And a lot of it is very beautiful, you know, I think that's what inspires people about art. This thing about public, public art is really important because it actually sort of signifies what's underneath it which are millions of people who actually find this expression to be their expression. And I, 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 I love the stuff. In a sense, I think, you know, it, what, he's do, what he's doing with the anonymity is actually really trying to focus people up on what's the, you know, look at the art. You know? and, and I think that the point about being able to actually operate freely in a, you know, in a world that, look, you know, hey, people actually get killed for, for graffiti. I am a writer, and I write for Revolution Newspaper. I host and produce the radio show on KPFK. I've been a revolutionary communist since ooh, my late 60s, and uh, my life is dedicated to <laughs> overthrowing the government. <laughs> uh, it's dedicated to, actually more than that though, it's actually dedicated to building a society that's free of all oppression, you know, that's that, that, where there's total transformation with traditional property ideas, traditional thinking, all of that, where, the, where there's not only no oppression, but no basis for oppression. And I think that to do that requires a revolution. One of the people that brought in here, I think Grace was her name, asked me, she said, Banksy really wanted to see South Central and Watts. And she asked me, she knew that I had done a lot of, I was 
very familiar with the neighborhoods and I know a lot of people there and she asked me if I would take him around, drive him around the next day. So I said, yeah, sure. And I picked him up on a street corner in Echo Park on a Saturday morning and we drove down to South Central, drove all through South Central and then went into Watts, went into the projects in Watts and uh, just you know hung out, talked to people, I introduced him to some people, some residents of the project, some revolutionary youth that were in the area, and we just drove around and chatted with people, and he was really getting off, of it, really liked just making that connection and seeing different things, different graffiti that was put up in the, in the, you know, on the streets of South Central, and the lot, seeing everything from murals to just tagging, he was just really, really loved seeing. We wanted to go a little bit more into Watts, so I took him over to the Watts Towers, which he was also really interested in, in terms of, you know, if you've seen the Watts Towers, it's something really a lot of people just look at it. You know, both the, the perseverance and the beauty that's concentrated in that and the defiance in a way where it's, you know, just, I remember talking with, about that with him. We went into the, there's an art center there, an exhibit space, and they had, a, they had an exhibit on uh, housing, housing as a human right, and it was posters from and silk screens and hand drawings and poetry and songs, and it was all, the whole space was filled with that. So we spent about maybe an hour and a half just going through the thing and looking at all of that and really trying to absorb it and talk about it and talk with the people that were in the space. And we kind of polished up the uh, Watson South Central tour. And on the way back, I asked him if he wanted to see Libros Revolución. And he jumped at it. He was really excited about it. He came into the store and he saw all the literature and the stuff that he had not seen concentrated in one space for a long time. He was particularly interested in and really happy about the fact that this was a store that was dedicated to bringing revolutionary theory to immigrant people, the Spanish people. And he spent about an hour in here just hanging out and checking out different titles and talking with people. And just before we were getting ready to leave, I asked him if he wanted to throw up some pieces in the store. I said, you know, as you can see, there's, in the store there's a lot of people come in, they would throw up pieces, they would do different things on the floor, on the walls. And he jumped at the chance, he was really into doing it. So he, uh, he did this piece, The Bird Over Here, on it column in the center and then he threw up the statement on flags and it was particularly around the statement on flags he really wanted to do that one because it was right in the middle of all this like this chauvinistic roar about war and you know America's gonna conquer the world and he really and it was all this flag waving all this sick stuff all over. so he really wanted to put that piece up so he threw both pieces up and that's where they've been ever since okay. you know one of the things that I did with Banksy when we were, when we were coming back is we stopped at the old Belmont Yards and which was a famous graffiti spot up just just maybe a couple miles from here, if that, a mile and a half, something like that. And then we went past that, and he knew about it, and he said, can we stop here? So I said, yeah, sure. So I parked the car, he jumps out, he runs over to this, this huge wall that was in the back end of the pit, and he just started throwing up these two pieces in the pit. And he didn't sign it, he didn't do anything, he just threw them up, and he just wanted them to be there in the middle of all this. And he was really, it was really a trip, he was really happy about that. And I remember, Year, a couple years ago, they started destroying the Belmont Yards, and they started building condos there. And I remember looking, and you could still see those pieces, and they were going to be totally, they were going to be completely destroyed, and there was no way to, to get in, and they did. Before anybody could do anything, they just tore these pieces down. And I thought at that time, like, God, what a, a just a criminal thing that this, this art was just disappearing. And then I started thinking about the store, and I started thinking of the pieces that were here, and you know, it was interesting because I knew he put the pieces up, but I also knew how much he, you know, appreciated the store. And I thought, you know, and I, remember, and I was always I trying to figure, was there a way we could actually somehow get these and even be able to support the store with, with them?
So we got it out of the wall, um, and my man John's gonna stand right here, make sure nobody puts their filthy mitts on it, that's because right. uh, I gotta knock a little frame together and it's gonna keep this thing from going and you know ripping the birdie's beak off. So I'm gonna do that real quick, and, um, and then we can back the plywood off and see if I got it without cracking, which I'm pretty sure I did. side where I got to cut. So my man John here is standing by with marshmallows in case I cook.
Do you have a space?